Hello guys, today we're going to do a little bit of a DIY project. Um, I've had this up and running for a little while, but I decided uh, you guys might be interested in, in it as well. This is a DIY um, oxidator, and the way this works is you require a, an air airtight container, and um, inside that air airtight container you're going to place hydrogen peroxide. Um, to get the reaction that you need, you're going to have to place a catalyst in here which does a couple of things. Um, the catalyst splits the hydrogen peroxide into three. Um, it splits it into the water molecule and it also splits it into two oxygen molecules. Now the two oxygen molecules are um, one is pure oxygen, that's what we'll get going into the trim tank. And the other one is active oxygen. Now I'm not sure if that's a gas form so I can't say for sure if it's that part will also go into your um, aquarium, but I would I would imagine it would be because oxygen is a gas that floats. Uh, so, um, so I've had this up and running for a week, and as you can see, it is producing a lot of bubbles here. Um, so this will be a mix of active oxygen and pure oxygen, I think, uh, which will do a couple of things. The pure oxygen. Uh, to give you an, a good example, see this um, air stone at the back? It looks like a lot of air has been pumped in. Well, 27% uh, of that is oxygen, the rest is uh, nitrogen. Uh, these little bubbles here should be 100% oxygen. Uh, the benefits in the shrimp tank should be um, water clarity, your water should clear because the act of oxygen actually, actually oxidizes any pollutants in an aquarium. Um, the other great thing is, is uh, when it's especially when it's hotter, is this will put more oxygen in the water, um, making it a little bit safer for your shrimp. Possibly making it a little bit more optimal conditions for shrimp because shrimp in the wild come from areas where there's streams, and these streams are highly oxygenated. So. That's a couple of bonus points there, and I'll show you how to make this. Alright, what you will need is now a few things. Of course you will need hydrogen peroxide, this is 3%. Um, you will need a bottle to contain your solution. You will need um, a coat hanger. This is going to serve two purposes. One is going to be, it's going to be, I'm going to bend it around the top so it's going to uh, um, act as an attachment point to your aquarium. Um, you're also going to cut a little bit off this, and this is going to be your catalyst, which will go inside with the hydrogen peroxide. Um, you'll need a length of 6mm um, PVC hose or silicon, it's up to you, whichever one you get. This, I think this one is the silicon version actually. Um, long nose pliers, a little bit super glue, make sure you use the water type, not the gel type. Um, a pair of scissors, a knife, so I can cut this. This is going to be the way I deliver um, my oxygen into the water. It's basically a chopstick, the one that you use for eating. And it's uh, it's very porous. So you pump oxygen through, you get a lot of oxygen bubbles coming out as well. Um, so the drill is set up to go. This is a, I think it's a 5mm drill bit. So if, if I have 6mm um, silicon tubing. You want it to be a little bit smaller, sorry, you want it to be a little bit larger than the hole that you're going to be drilling so it's a snug fit. Um, so I'll put you on the tripod and then I'll do this because I'm, I'm making this for the big tank at the top so... Okay, is that good enough you think guys? Alright, let's get started. Um, First thing is make sure your container is thoroughly clean because you don't want any sugars left in here because if you put your hydrogen peroxide into a dirty container, your hydrogen peroxide will react to any contaminants that are in here as well. Just make sure you clean the lid and take all the, you know, get one here. Right, so the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the top with my 5mm drill bit. Make sure you get any hard bits of plastic off. 
Um, and then you take your, let's make sure you're in focus. You take your a silicon tube, cut it to an angle so it goes to a point like this. This makes it easier for you to shove through the top of the bowl. Like so, and it should be a little bit of a snug fit, you see? You see? Like that, that's all, the all, that's as far as you want it to go in. Um, next, I'm going to do the attachment point. I think I'll just hit the lid off of this. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to bend this around the lid. Like so. Just give it one twist. And all this is to do is to hold um, the bottle on the side of the aquarium. Like so. Cut off the excess. And straighten up your little hoop that you will have that will go onto the rim of your tank. Okay, so you end up with something like this. You can make it a little bit nicer looking if you like. So basically, this is going to be the rim of your tank and it's going to hook itself on. Maybe I'll show you from this side. Like so. And it's going to hold your bottle with your solution. Alright, so we will need a catalyst. So I'm going to take, let me think about this, probably one centimeter of of wire here, just like so. It's a very, very small piece, and you will be able to judge this for yourself when, um, like, if you do this and it runs out of oxygen too fast, uh, you know your you will know your catalyst is too big. And um, as far as I know, uh, the ones that I've tested with these, these especially with coat hanger wire, they do need to re be replaced. So, but. For a whole full coat hanger wire, you will get thousands of catalysts out of one piece. Um, so you pop in your, your catalyst. Um, I'm going to do the, the end of the chopstick. Um, basically, you want maybe two or three centimeters of this. You don't. I mean, it doesn't have to be that big. Okay, so you can see like um, they're all like it's, it's basically the same thickness on each end. And what you need to do is you need to make it so it's thinner at one end, so you can push it into your silicon. Do that with a little knife here. And what I tend to find with this as well is, is this doesn't have to be perfect either. As long as you can get it in, um, what will happen is the chopstick will swell up with water, the wood will swell up with water and it will make it a snug fit. So, push it in here. There's a little bit more off. You can probably have to do this as well couple of times because you do want it to be snug you see it going on there and what will happen is is the chopstick is uh, wood basically is porous on the end you might be able to see that actually I don't know if that will come out in the the camera but wood is actually porous so if you have oxygen coming from this end here it will actually travel all the way through the wood and be released from little pores the pores tend to be tiny so and that's what that's what make, makes it a good diffuser material it does clog up faster than the stone ones but it's a chopstick how, how, how easy is it to replace this 
Okay, what next? Um, we need to further seal your little lid here. And what I use for this is liquid um, super glue. You want to do the inside, give it a liberal coating. Because this is going to be your seal between your. Uh, basically, it's going to stop all your oxygen escaping. And if you need to do this a couple of times, do do it a couple of times because um, you will just be wasting your time otherwise. You know? So get it, all, get it all up the tube. You want this to be pretty firm. And then just sit it down and leave it to dry. Try not to spill it all over yourself. I actually find that this uh, stuff with super glue works better if you put it outside. So I think it's because it's a little bit more up here. I'm just going to pop this outside. A little bit more airflow seems to cure the uh, seems to cure the um, super glue faster. So that was basically the setup. Once once that lid is dry, I'll put it back in here, and I will fill this bottle with half um, my solution of hydrogen peroxide. I'll just take you off here. And as I said, you will end up with you will end up with this. Which is pretty good, I think. And you can do a little bit better job of the the hang on if you want. But it works. See the bubbles? Alright guys, thanks for watching. Eh? I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.